Hello and welcome to lesson two about the Columbian Exchange. Lesson one was about plants and animals that were exchanged between Europe and the Americas and today's lesson is going to be about diseases. Uh, not the most fun topic to discuss but an extraordinarily important one when we're discussing what happened when the old world met the new world. Our first left side question to guide our notes today is what old world diseases came to the Americas from Europe? One thing that's important to understand is that the diseases that started off in Europe were extremely strong. Uh, and part of the reason they were strong is because the Europeans had developed pretty strong immune systems. And so the diseases were always struggling to become stronger than the immune systems of the Europeans. It's, it's a battle that always occurs between a virus and uh, the target of the virus, and that still happens today. Diseases today are overcoming antibiotics all the time. Uh, lots of diseases were from Europe that had never been seen in the Americas and were introduced to the Americas by the Europeans who came over on their ships. Among these were smallpox, measles, diphtheria, whooping cough, chicken pox, the bubonic plague, scarlet fever, and influenza, also known as the flu. Um, these all went one direction. Um, and most of these diseases were very easily communicable, that's a big fancy word that means transmitted or given, so it meant that some diseases are hard to get, other diseases are easy to get. These were all diseases that were pretty easy to get because they flew through the air or they could be transmitted simply by touching somebody who had them. And the issue that's most important to understand here is that Europeans did not know they were doing this. Uh, medical science at the time was not very good and most people had no idea how disease was even transmitted. So this was not done on purpose, um, but it almost didn't matter. The consequences were still dire and extremely real. And I am about to change the slide. Europeans had certain beliefs that also affected uh, the Colombian exchange and affected the Europeans' attitudes towards the New World. Um, and this is a very important thing to understand. As I said on the previous slide, there was no germ theory, and that's a scientific term. The Europeans did not understand how diseases were transmitted. As a result of that, they didn't wash their hands, they didn't uh, clean or sanitize things that were given to the Native Americans. You know, it was pretty much a, a dirty world and they just did what they did. Also, as a result of the strength of the Catholic Church in Europe, illness was actually considered to be punishment or a consequence of sin. So, from a European perspective, if you got sick, that must mean that God was punishing you for something that you did. And so they didn't worry nearly as much about trying to help people become better. Uh, the Europeans also viewed the Native Americans, the indigenous peoples of North and South America, who were largely heathen in their eyes because their religions weren't Christian uh, and they participated in things such as polygamy and uh, human sacrifice. Um, they basically viewed them as practicing pagan religions uh, that were not Christian, and therefore they were regarded as sinners um, who were subject to illness as a punishment. So when many Native Americans became sick, the Europeans literally believed that God was punishing them for their evil religions. Um, and so when you have this as your attitude, um, it definitely affects the way you look at and view what happens when lots and lots and lots of people get sick. 
I'm about to change the slide again. How did the diseases race ahead of the people? And what I mean here is, you know, the Europeans landed on the shores of North and South America, but the diseases they brought with them were carried on the wind, and often they were carried hundreds of miles way ahead of the Europeans themselves, so natives often died before they even met a European. In fact, in most cases, the native peoples became sick before they had direct contact with Europeans. So they did not know what made them sick. They did not know what killed them. They simply got sick and died. So when the Spanish came along and when the other Europeans came along, they found empty villages that looked like they'd been empty for a very long time. Uh, when tribes would trade with each other, a lot of the goods and things that they were trading might have had the diseases or the viruses on them and so without knowing it, they were transmitting the disease simply by buying and selling and trading stuff with each other. The key point to understand here is that the Europeans did not do this on purpose. There is very little evidence and practically no evidence to think or believe that the Europeans did this on purpose. Um, and therefore, those people who are conspiracy theorists who think that the Europeans deliberately killed off all the Native Americans. That's simply not true. They did want to dominate and control them, but there's very little evidence to prove that they wanted them killed off completely. 90% uh, of Native Americans, and that's the high end of the, the estimate, um, but approximately 90% of Native Americans died simply because they had no immunity to disease and the Europeans had no idea that they were transmitting that disease. Flip to the next slide. So smallpox was by far the worst of the diseases that was communicated and transmitted and definitely had the largest impact on native peoples. And I'm gonna warn you here, smallpox is not a pretty picture. Our left side question is, what were the consequences of smallpox? In central Mexico, where the Aztecs lived, the population dropped from about 25 million when Hernan Cortes showed up in 1519 to less than 1 million in 1605. So in approximately 85 years, the population dropped 24 out of 25 times. I don't know what the percentage is there, but that's, that's a significant drop. That's a a mind-blowing drop. That is more than 90%. On Hispaniola Island, where Christopher Columbus first landed, there were 1 million natives there in 1492. That number dropped to 46,000 by 1512. That's only 20 years. And the reason for that was disease. And then the other thing to consider here is those natives that survived must have been natives who had the strongest immune systems, because otherwise they wouldn't have survived. The statistic I just gave you that in North America, 90% of Native Americans were gone within 100 years of the pilgrims landing on Plymouth Rock in what is now Massachusetts. These statistics are concerning, they're real, and they do a lot to explain the true consequences of the Columbian Exchange. Um, we're about to see some disturbing images of smallpox, so please prepare yourself just so you have an idea of what happened to the native peoples. Uh, these are some drawings uh, that were made by the Spanish and the missionaries of what happened to the native peoples. Take a gander at that for a bit. And then the next picture is an actual picture of a smallpox victim. And I'm not going to leave that on the screen very long because it's hard for me to look at. So why were the Europeans immune to these diseases? It's a very good question. If it's killing the natives, why didn't it kill the Europeans? 
the Euro European environment um, allowed them to develop resistance to these diseases over thousands of years. Um, the weaker Europeans had died long ago, and so those Europeans that remained had resistance um, in their genetics when they were born. So they were essentially stronger in terms of their immune system. Uh, most of these diseases started off with animals or insects. Most of the sicknesses that we as human beings get started off with other species and mutated until they began to infect us, and so it was with these diseases. Uh, domesticated animals, that's uh, domesticated is the opposite of wild, so domesticated animals are tame and they work with humans, uh, and plants were a lot more common in Europe. The natives did not have pets uh, for the most part, so they didn't develop that immunity simply by having animals around them as pets on a regular basis. And because the European environment had greater diversity, uh, it also had more protection from the elements. So when the Europeans arrived in the Americas, they were much, much stronger from a health perspective uh, than the natives that they encountered. And now I will flip to the next slide. So why are all of these population changes important? Uh, I probably don't need to tell you that. You can figure that out just based on the facts that you've been given. But let, let's go through it point by point and just talk about why things changed so dramatically as a result of the Columbian Exchange. The obvious first fact is that Native American populations decreased. Use 90% as your, as your number. If nine out of every 10 people you know died, the world would be a different place. If that population was replaced by people coming from far, far away, the world would look and feel very, very different. And that's how it was. Uh, in fact, because the Native Americans died, that created a need for Europeans to bring labor from across the ocean. And so that's why African slaves were originally brought to the New World. If the native populations hadn't died, the truth of the matter is the natives probably would have been the slaves. Instead, they brought slaves over from Africa. Uh, Europeans also moved over to the Americas to oversee all of this agricultural production. The slaves were there. Someone needed to actually run the farms and, for lack of a better way of putting it, own the slaves. Um, we can look back on that from the year 2016 and say that's not something we would do today, but um, in those days that was considered an acceptable thing to do. And then once you had the native population, the European population, and the slave population, those populations over time began to mix together, uh, forming the mosaic that is the backdrop of most North and South American countries today. So these are really the long-term consequences of the Columbian Exchange. Prepare for the next slide. There is no next slide, so this concludes lesson number two. Um, you now have a strong basis of facts to start your research with, and now it's going to be your job to add to this research with other sources that I'm going to allow you to use in class. Um, your paper will be the summary, so it's less important in this case that you write a summary right now. This is Mr. Blumendahl signing off.